Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to our next lesson in our modern C++ series. In this lesson, we'll continue our discussion of the standard template library and our algorithms library, and we're going to be revisiting some of the copy algorithms. Now, in the previous video, we looked at copy, understood how it worked, and even did a little performance experiment. I hope some of you did that and uh, observed maybe what it means to copy, how expensive that can be, and maybe some ways that you can speed it up. But with that said, let's go ahead and look at copy if and copy n, which are two other variations of the function that should be, well, really all you need when it comes to copying data. Of course, there are lower level uh, functions like mem move, mem copy, and these types of things if you really need to optimize things. Uh, but let's go ahead and see what C++ has available for us on our favorite website, CPP Reference. And we're going to go to the algorithms library here and take a look at uh, some of the modifying uh, sequence operations now. Now, copy is not really going to modify anything. Um, but uh, it is, in a sense, uh, taking the data structure, moving it somewhere else where it might be modified, right? It's a new uh, set of memory here. Uh, so we have copy if and copy n, which came in C++11, uh, which again are going to be just a little bit more flexible. Uh, copy n just copies a number of elements to new location, and then copy if has some predicate to it. Now, what is interesting, again, about these copy functions that might make them, you know, potentially more uh, efficient or interesting is that they do have these execution policies. Again, we'll get to that later on in the series, uh, but let's just go ahead and take a look at copy if. And again, this has a unary uh, predicate, um, meaning that we can actually uh, make a decision about how we want to copy stuff. So this starts to become very interesting when we have... Uh, some of our other algorithms, for instance, and it's going to be interesting later on, I think, in C++ 23-ish, that time frame, when we're able to uh, sort of chain together a series of functions. You can do this um, in different ways and people build libraries, but, um, but for now, at least with this uh, building block, we have a way to just uh, check some predicates. So let's go ahead and look at copy if here. Uh, in fact, we could probably just dive in and do a little uh, example here. Let's just go ahead and create a vector here. Uh, let's actually do something different with strings uh, here. And let's just create some uh, string here. Um, let's just go ahead and say, hello, uh, my uh, world. Something like that here. Okay, something fun. Um, and what I want to do here is I want to actually write out uh, to a new string here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and create a string here and this is sort of my placeholder here and let's go ahead and use copy if copy if uh, and i'm going to use uh, from the beginning to the uh, end of my string and let's go ahead and specify a predicate now what i'm going to do for this predicate here is look at each character uh, c here and what i'm going to go ahead and do here is only copy the character if it's uppercase here now i've got to go ahead and look at my ascii table here which I think CPP reference has one. Let's go ahead and see here. Uh, if I search uh, ASCII, let's see if it has an ASCII chart here. So I want all the characters, if their value is greater than, let's go ahead and find the uppercase, uh, 65, greater than or equal to 65. So let's just do greater than 64 or less than uh, 91, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, return um if uh c is greater than 64 and c is less than 91 okay and then i'll write out my uh s2 here okay so let's go ahead and give this a try here let's add in our uh test number zero test uh, zero we'll call that function uh let's go ahead and give this a run and then we'll see if we did anything uh silly here Oops, looks like I did a bunch of uh, silly stuff here. Okay, uh, so what's going on here with our copy if here and our predicate? Oh, it expects uh, four arguments here. Okay, something uh, of the nature template argument deduction failed. Okay, let's take a little bit of a closer look at copy if. Um, I need my input, my output, ah, and I forgot my uh, source here. Okay, so let's go ahead and add our source here. Now let's see if we can just use S2 as a uh, source here, okay? Otherwise we can use, like we learned in the previous lesson, the front inserter or the back uh, inserter. Let's go ahead and try that out. Um, yeah, it looks like it's uh, still struggling with that. So let's go ahead and use our uh, back inserter S2. Okay, so we learned about that. Um, and uh, this works here, but 
I, I think I went a little bit too fast there for that. L let's go ahead and just try to parse this air in case you get it. Uh, see what it's complaining about here. Um, because S2 itself isn't an output iterator. Okay, that's that's the first thing. It's a string uh, that we're looking at here. Okay, and that's what we need here uh, for copy if. So let's go ahead and take a look here. Let's let's just try to get some hints here. Okay, so let's go say in this file here, string, etc. Error, no match for operator. Okay, that's dereferencing here because that's that's the output operator. Um, this one's a little bit uh, tricky. It's not giving us a great error here, but it's basically telling us for this string here, we can't write out a result um, to the the you know where we're writing the result. We're taking whatever our iterator position is in our back inserter. Okay, uh, let me go ahead and put it back in here. Let's get something that's working. Um, but we need something where I have uh, from my data structure here. This is where I have a uh, hello, uh, et cetera. Uh, and where I'm writing to, right, this output iterator, the second ar uh, argument here, uh, wherever I'm looking at these different locations here. Uh, well, actually, so I start off here with uh, hello, and then I write here. Uh, in our data structure, and then I do the next character, the next character, etc. Um, so you can kind of parse out what it's trying to do, this result that it's building into, that we're copying into. Um, you know, we're taking whatever the first uh, character is, which is, you know, here, and then here, and then here, and then writing out our uh, string here. Uh, that's what it's sort of complaining about. So again, usually when you get a mess of errors here, it's a template error here. But um, anyways, uh, what's neat about copy if is we have this little uh, predicate here. Um, I sort of want to preserve that space here. Uh, so anyways, uh, or uh, C equals uh, space here. Let's see if that works. Uh, let's make this a little bit smaller, clear where our errors. And let's see, that does the trick here. Okay, so we get hello world here. Uh, since we have two spaces here, um, that's kind of interesting. We have two spaces. I want to actually get rid of those, uh, as well. Uh, we'll have a, uh, there's another algorithm called unique. That's kind of nice here. That'll get rid of letters that are in a, in a row, but that'll actually mess up this here. So I don't want to quite use that. Um, uh, but anyways, um, this is a nice, uh, nice enough example of copy. If again, you know, usually where folks are using this for maybe filtering out some data, maybe you have in a game or something, a bunch of objects that are still alive. You don't want to copy those to a new collection. Um, uh, so that could be another example. Um, so, you know, those, those are some uh, use cases for it. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the other algorithm that we got here, copy N. Um, and let's bring that up on CPP reference here. It's in its own page here. And this basically just copies n uh, number of elements. And by the way, uh, I talked about this the last time. All these algorithms are basically linear in the, um, in the number of elements you have, and then you know times whatever costs to uh, perform that actual copy. That's your your constant factor. Um, this one kind of uh, you know makes sense here. We have our iterator where we're starting from, how many things we want to copy, and then where we're writing the result out to. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and Let's kind of replicate this example here. We'll use strings because I think that's different from what they got in CPP reference. Yeah, they use some sort of, I guess they have a string here. Um, and they have an effector example. But anyways, uh, let's go ahead and do copy n. We're going to start from, uh, let's make this kind of interesting. S1 begin uh, plus 5. Uh, how many things do we want to copy? Uh, well, let's go ahead and say something like s1 dot length. Let's look at our string. Uh, let's right click that here. String. What are our properties? Length or size? Uh, length. Okay. Uh, or size. You can use the same thing. Um, let's see. Length minus five. That's going to be our count for how many things we want to copy here. Uh, and then the destination s2. Okay. And let's go ahead and say our result here which is stored in s2 and let's go ahead and run this see how we do here oops uh yeah that is length with a that is a member function not just a uh, property uh, oh and again uh we get that issue here i did uh, same exact thing here but i 
know what's going on. Standard back inserter. S2. And there we go here. All right. Um, oops. Uh, and now I got to also run test one here. Okay, test one. Okay, so we should get uh, my world or something like that. There we are, my world. Um, but I should offset this with the space properly. <laughs> uh, six, and there we are. Uh, oops, incremented wrong. There we are. Um, so that's just a little example. Uh, again, of copy n could be a nice thing to use for string processing, grabbing out some chunks of data, uh, for instance. Again, what's nice of this, if you're coming from a C background and you do lots of, uh, say, mem copy, where you're sort of picking out certain bytes, for instance, um, you know, that works fine. That's a great thing to do if you have like binary data or, or know what the data is. But if you have collections of things that might be um, like maybe later on, I decide, uh, you know, that this is going to be a uh, wide character string or some other type of string. Um, you know, and again, you can still do those things with um, mem copies and so on. But again, this is just a little bit more clear what the intent is. I'm copying some subset. Uh, I don't have to think about the object sizes or anything, right? This will figure out that it's the, the characters and so on. Uh, in fact, if we look at, let's see if it has a implementation here. Yeah, it's got one uh, for us here. Uh, I guess here for the count here uh, and how it's writing out to the uh, output iterator and so on. But again, a little bit fewer details uh, that we have to worry about here. And I think, uh, let me see if this has the different execution policies. I'll have to look at this one um, for maybe doing uh, parallelism. I'll have to look at that uh, if that's available. Uh, I actually haven't tried this one. Looks like it has some, uh, but we'll have to see if they're valid. Uh, but anyways, that's copy n. Nice little algorithm to complete our collection of copying stuff. And soon it'll be time to talk about things like removing and transforming data and so on. So, uh, so there you have it, folks. Hope you enjoyed that lesson. Hope you've been able to play around with these uh, copy functions. And uh, again, hopefully it makes your code more readable, easier to work with, and so on. So folks, uh, I look forward to your comments and discussions otherwise. And thank you, as always, for your time and attention. And I'll see you in the next one.